Hi everyone, it's Michael. This video is all about my disinfecting process for my orchids and semi-hydroponics. Now, I've referenced this in a lot of my videos before, but I did want to give you a visual about what precisely that looks like. So, once a month, every 30 days, I invest in this preventative maintenance process. And so, if you need to set a reminder on your phone, if you need to put this in your calendar, I would strongly encourage you to do so. I, I can't emphasize this enough. Preventative maintenance is the name of the game. It is so much easier to invest in these behaviors than trying to backtrack to manage a mealybug infestation or to manage um, algae buildup in the bottom of your container. So just my word of advice, I would encourage you to think about whatever form you want to do this in. So this is mine. Here are my tools. Of course, I have my one gallon watering can, my Fizan 20. If you've watched my videos, you know I'm obsessed with this stuff. It's an algicide, fungicide, bactericide, viricide. I will link it below. Um, and then the other tools included are my one teaspoon measuring spoon, some duct tape, and then in here I have my, my solution of Fizan 20 that is also in the watering can. And then in this one, I have, it's a, it's a disinfectant combination I make. It's equal parts water and rubbing alcohol and then I do a teaspoon of uh, dish soap. So that'll come in handy in just a bit. So, I think I've covered all the tools. Let's jump in and I'll show you what that process looks like. Let's get started. Um, got my duct tape here, and you don't need a very big piece, but you do need to make sure it makes perfect contact with the holes because you are gonna fill it up with uh, liquid. So here's this guy. Go ahead and place it right over the aeration holes. And I just like to give it a little rub down to make sure it's airtight seal and you just Close it right off. So now I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process with all the other containers. All right, guys, I think I did it. So now everything has been taped up. I am going to go ahead and grab my Fizan solution. So as I mentioned before, I already have my Fizan solution here in my one gallon watering can, and I also have it here in my spray bottle. So the solution concentration is two teaspoons per every gallon. So that is already been taken care of. And now I'm just going to go ahead and fill up each of the containers. We'll just start with this guy so you can get a good visual. I fill it all the way up to the top, making sure I don't get it in the crown. So I'll just do that one for right now, and then I'll tell you what the next step is. In this bottle here, I have my solution of rubbing alcohol, water, and dish soap. I'll put the proportions in the description below. But now what I do is just go through and disinfect. So this solution is kind of the go-to for everything. Uh, aphids, mealybugs, any type of pest is going to really, really dislike this. Um, I understand spider mites can be a little bit more difficult, but this seems to work really effectively for me in my climate. Um, and then I just go ahead and I give the leaves a good spray down, even into the crown. And then of course you wanna make sure you dry it out when you're done. But I just go ahead and I spritz underneath the leaves, on top of the leaves, in between the leaves, and anything that's hiding out, any potential problem that is just waiting to present itself is going to be eradicated that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and press pause and fast forward and do this for the rest of the plants. I'll jump back in in just a moment. All right, guys, I have just finished that process. Now, all of them are soaking in their Fizan 20 solution, and they've all been sprayed with the combination of rubbing alcohol, water, and dish soap. So now I'm gonna allow this entire thing to sit for about one hour. Okay, Google, set a timer for one hour. Okay, one hour, starting now. Perfect. So you may be wondering what exactly does this accomplish? So Fizan 20 is going to make sure that there is no buildup, there are no viruses, there's no bacteria, that there's no algae that is taking hold of your roots or any of the potting medium. Of course, the Leca beads are a little bit more resistant to those classic types of problems. However, you still want to be sure. Also, remember that the perfect formula for algae creation is light, food, and water. So it has all of those things represented here. So if you don't manage this, you're going to get such a thick layer of algae in the bottom of your pots, and it's going to prevent light from getting to your orchids. It's going to um, potentially suffocate the root system. It would have to go really far for it to do that, but at the same time, you wanna make sure that you're just managing your controllable contribution and not allowing it to go that far. So I'm gonna give this its full hour, and then I will drain all of these in just a bit. 
I'll be right back. So a couple things have occurred to me while I've been waiting for this disinfecting process to complete, and it's some general questions that you might have. Uh, namely, is Fizan 20 safe for your plants? The answer in short is yes. Um, assuming, of course, that you're using it in the proper concentration and that you are using it at the right time. Again, I do this once every 30 days. So these plants do not live in Fizan 20 solution. They're not watered with Fizan 20 solution. This is just a disinfecting process. So yes, the Fizan 20 is just fine for the plants. Uh, the second question is, can I use the dish soap and alcohol solution on flower spikes and flowers themselves? And the answer is no, don't do it. I made that mistake because I'm dumb. And what it does is it just dries out the flowers. It can cause bud blast. So the way that I handle that is when these are in spike, when they are in bloom, I will just take one of those produce grocery shopping bags and slide it over the flower spike. I'll go to town spring and then I will remove it when I'm done. Bear in mind, however, here's the disclaimer, mealybugs, aphids, they love hiding into flower spikes. They love, they love hiding in blooms. So if you identify that you have an outbreak, it's probably best practice for you to go ahead and remove that flower spike anyway. And that would be the only caveat. That would be the only exception I would say. Yes, spray the flower spike and then cut it off or cut it off and then spray the plant however you need to do it. All right, guys, we have arrived at the last step in this process. We are at my very glamorous kitchen sink and we are going to remove the duct tape and allow these plants to drain. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so the last step is we're gonna allow these to fully drain and dry for about an hour. So you just wanna help it along by pouring out the excess water, like so. Thank you, Google. Turn off timer. Okay, Google, turn off timer. She can be so non-cooperative sometimes. All right guys, and that's pretty much it. What I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna allow this to sit for about an hour now that it's been drained. Um, and then I will resume with my regular watering and fertilizing process, which I will link below. And that's just a really great way to keep your plants happy and healthy. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, as always, if you have any questions or concerns, I encourage you to leave them in the comments section below. And be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day.